Hello, everyone. Is this on? Mm -hmm. It is? Okay. My name is Sue Bowensack, and I'm a member of the board of the foundation here at Stanley Community College and chairperson of the Community Relations and Development Committee. On behalf of both of those, I'd like to welcome you to the first of four lecture series that we're holding in Stanley County. We're holding these lectures to make you familiar with the diverse services offered here at Stanley Community College and to present you with interesting and insightful speakers. I'd like to introduce you to Robert Myers, Program Head for Cybercrime Technology, and he will present tonight's speaker. Good evening. We thank everybody for coming out tonight. We are really excited in the Cybercrime Te Technology Department to have Mr. Grogan here. I've been trying to get hold of him for a long, long time. <laughs> and um, he is a phenomenal speaker. He will give you a lot of good information. He has uh, been seen many times on the uh, CBS uh, show Swift Justice with Nancy Grace. He's a forensic expert for them, and he's a certified forensic document uh, examiner. He's going to talk to you about uh, a little bit about forensics and what he does, some of the cases he's worked on. So please uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Thomas Grogan. Thank you. Good evening. How are you doing today? So, I just want to start off real quick here. Today in court on Swift Justice with Nancy Grace. She went to sell the car. Not true. She went and got a title Not to go true. get a title. I'm just going to take notice that you say every other sentence is a lie. Today on Swift Justice with Nancy Grace. For 10 years, she was America's toughest and most successful prosecutor. Now, she has her own court, and she's the judge. The cases are real. The decisions are binding. And justice will be swift. Sir, I don't care who says what. I'm going to find the truth. Court starts now on Swift Justice with Nancy Grace. Beverly Raybon says after she bought a 97 Dodge Caravan for 900 bucks, the seller, Taran Anderson, refuses to sign over the title. Beverly's suing for either the transfer of the title or for $1,500. For the defense, 32-year-old Taran Anderson says she never agreed to sell her van, that she loaned it to Beverly, and Beverly stole it. To all of you ladies, do you agree to be bound by my ruling today, ma'am? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ma'am? Yes. Okay, does that look familiar to you? No. I told the other judge it did not. Not ringing a bell? No. Okay, let's bring out Thomas Grogan, please. Document examiner, handwriting expert. Mr. Grogan, I can't thank you enough, as usual. Mm, thank you. Now, Mr. Grogan, when you listen to Duran Anderson, she's extremely believable. But then, when you listen to her father, this is her blood father, he is extremely believable. That's one of the reasons why I don't get involved with the backstory of the case. Smart. Uh, Very wise. Just give me the question documents, the known samples, let me do my job. Coming up, was the signature on a bill of sale forged? Cancer and the chemotherapy that they give you can and does affect the handwriting. Travel consideration provided by... Raybon versus Anderson. Was the signature on a bill of sale forged? Nancy has our handwriting expert examine it right now. What say you? Now we have the uh, question signature at the top and then three comparison or known samples. So of, the bottom three are the known. Right. And I know from personal experience, because I'm a cancer survivor myself, <laughs> cancer and the chemo that you, uh, the chemotherapy that they give you can and does affect the handwriting. I mean, okay. I can show you handwriting samples of, of mine before and after cancer, and they're, they're very different. I did not know that. Yes. It doesn't make things any easier. I understand. So, but a few things I wanted to point out here is the base of the T's have this little um, A-shaped at the base of the T stem. It's not closed all the way at the base. Uh, see, what, what, right. what are you talking about, up in the middle? Right here. Ah, I do see it. Okay, I'm an amateur. 
But I can already see this A loop is the same as that A loop. Correct. Now, one thing I don't see, though, is she's got a loop on her D, and there's not a loop up there. Right. But that A is so overwhelming, and that T is so overwhelming, and also the S not closed up and the same loop over. You have a good eye, Nancy. Not really. <laughs> and then you got this little flag coming off. What do you call that? Well, we call it a, a terminal stroke. It's basically where, where the tro terminal stroke is basically where the stroke ends. We have the initial stroke where the, the, the stroke begins of the letter, and then where it ends, where it causes a terminus. That me when you, but the way it comes out so mm -hmm. dramatically, there's got to be some kind of a, a name for that. Um, you know, because not everybody has that. It's not really a flourish. It's a z Right. And also the slant is very similar. Mm -hmm. Usually if someone's going to disguise their handwriting, that's usually one thing they get wrong is the slant because it's, it's so minute. You, usually if I'm detecting a forgery, it's either from the slant or most, most likely with uh, the lowercase letters because what they'll do is they'll try to mimic at least the first letter of each name. And they figure, well, if I could make that look the same, it's good enough for government work, they'll let it pass. But when I start examining the lower letters, that's when people get sloppy. Mm -hmm. What's your final rendered opinion? Well, taken in consideration, uh, the chemotherapy and so forth may have had a, a, an effect on the handwriting. It does. Uh, it is my expert opinion that the question document was indeed signed by Taran Anderson. Mr. Grogan, you really are something. Thank you. Something wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Nancy's decision is binding, and it's next. I have a friend that uh, every once in a while when she starts to feel a little ornery, she texts me. It has two texts. First text is, Tom, here's something wonderful. <laughs> and the second text about 30 seconds later is, something special. <laughs> and because people have seen that, it's like, is Nancy coming on to you or something? <laughs> What's going on there? And I, the, actually, uh, for those of you who noticed that there was some continuity error in there, did you notice how many times that the paper disappeared and reappeared in my hand? Okay. The, the way they do those episodes, it's like she, she tapes like seven, eight episodes, bam, 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 right after the other over a course of like three or four days. And that was actually uh, my, my second episode that we taped. And the first one, uh, even looking back and watching it, I, I was so stiff. I mean, I was just, because I was scared. I was like, Mike. God, this is Nancy Graves. I, I hope she doesn't rip me a new one on national TV. <laughs> but I was so stiff. And, and uh, so we had like one or two episodes bef in between the two that I was there for. So I went backstage and then the producer said, Tom, Tom, you're doing good. Nancy loves you. He said, just, just loosen up a little bit. Okay, have, have fun with it. It's not federal court. Just have fun with it. So the one thing that they ended up on the, uh, on the editing room floor was that little section where she comes down and says, well, I could already see this and this here and that. I, I thought to myself, okay, they want me to have fun with this. So, so I said at one point, well, hell, Nancy, you don't need me anymore. Have a nice day. And I walked off the set. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. And uh, basically, uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing some uh, things about this being the, the first of a series of lectures of other speakers that will be coming in in, in uh, subsequent months. Uh, I'm going to talk about forensics, what it is, what it isn't, and basically uh, destroy all of your concepts of what is reality and what's on TV. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to burst some bubbles here tonight. Now, before shows like CSI and and, uh, and, and NSC, you know, the whole thing, people didn't know much about forensics. And it was really when those shows started coming out that there's been a whole flood of people, both young and old, coming into, it's like, we want to learn how to do this. This is cool. We want to do, yeah, how, how do we get to do something like this for a living and get paid to do it, you know? Uh, so, other than like a degree in criminal justice, the, 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 the higher uh, educational institutions were really not very prepared 
to train these people that are wanting to get this this information and uh, get trained to do this. Uh, really, the, the the only way at that point was if you were an employee of the government or law enforcement agency, that was pretty much the only way you were going to get training. Uh, so as, as things started, uh, momentum started happening, there's, there's been more uh, courses as far as forensics, uh, forensics overall, specific fields and, and specialities of forensics. But really, the, the whole thing of forensics is that you're using a speciality or a special knowledge about something, and you're applying that knowledge and skill to the court system. Okay, now I have kids and, and uh, college graduates call me and say, how do we get involved in forensics? I wanna, have a, I wanna have a job in forensics. So I tell them, well, there, there's no really degree in forensics, but I tell them there are forensic engineers, there are forensic doctors, there are forensic nurses, there are forensic psychologists, so I encourage them to not get so hung up on that whole forensic aspect, but learn how to do something like engineering, doctor, psychology, stuff like that. And then once you get the experience and the training and the skills in that, you can then further that to get more specialized training in the, the whole forensic aspect of it and learn how to do uh, you know, affidavits and, and court reports and testimony and stuff like that. So you know, when, when some people ask me what I do, it's not just forensics. Forensics is sort of like the umbrella over all the specific little niches that you could uh, specialize in. The whole thing about a forgery, in my written affidavits and court reports and when I testify in court, I never refer to something as a forgery. Okay? And that is because of the definition of a forgery is the, the, the creation of a false written document or alteration of a genuine article and then to present that altered or copied document with the intent to defraud. Okay? For me to use the word forgery, either in my affidavits or testimonies, is to imply intent. That is not my job as a forensic specialist. That's the job for the court to decide. So in a realm of what I do in question documents is, I don't say that something is a forgery. I say, okay, this question signature, or this question document, compared to such and such number of known samples, or what we call exemplars, it is my opinion to a certain degree of certainty or, or uh, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, depending on what type of case I'm working on, is that it was either authored by the same person, <coughs> not authored by the same person, or no opinion. And believe it or not, no opinion is in fact an opinion in, in the, the court system uh, for what we do. The expert witness, and this is from uh, the Federal Rules of Evidence, um, now, for any students here tonight, as well as the students that were videotaping this, that are watching this uh, via video, um, there will be some people out there that will tell you, you have to be trained by the FBI, okay, or you have to be trained by such and such a law, or you have to be employed by a law enforcement agency, you have to be employed by the government, you have to belong by such and such a professional organization, okay? Bullcrap. crap. 